Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I hope everybody's doing well. In our last CubeJS video, we created custom blocks, items, potion effects, removed and created recipes, as well as mess with item renames along with item tooltips. While that guide was made in 1.19, we will be taking a look at the changes to 1.20 and what is now made possible with the 1.20 update, such as block registry changes and creative tab customizations. We'll also be making custom foods with potion effects, creating a custom chest container, and just to give you guys a broader perspective of what QJS is really capable of, we will be writing up a script where we change monster armor upon spawning as well as giving items to new players upon on first world join. So if you have not watched my first tutorial, I advise you go there now and do so where I cover CubeJS basics. I will just be assuming you already know the CubeJS basics and we'll get right into it. So like before, we'll go into our startup scripts and we'll open up our tutorial file we wrote in the last video. And inside, we will first quickly cover a very small change to the block registry. Now taking a look at the script we used in the last video to register a wool block, we set the material to wool with dot material wool. This in 1.20 will be changed to sound type wool and that's pretty much it for that i will also have in the bottom right hand corner a little bar indicating which minecraft version these scripts will work in because while most scripts will work in either 1.18 and 1.19 some scripts are 1.20 plus I'll also be doing what I did in the last video, where if it applies, I'll be putting the 1.18 equivalent of the starting lines commented out above the 1.19 plus codes. Okay, getting into the main scripts I will be showing you, we will first create a new food item with configurable potion effects. So what we can do if you have these files already, you can copy and paste this and delete this, and we will be using this. And we'll be registering event.create and we'll call it ancient tempora and then outside of this parentheses we'll do display name parentheses quotation marks and I have a name picked out right here for it with it'll be green and it'll be bold I will leave the link for these color codes in the description for you if you'd like to check it out and then we'll do dot food parentheses food equal sign bracket and curly brackets enter and we'll do food enter dot hunger parentheses and we'll set this to 10 for example this will set the hunger that you will gain when you eat it and then we'll set the saturation this number is far greater than the number you set here due to a calculation like so this is the saturation calculation it will do dot effect Minecraft regeneration. We'll do 1800. This is the duration of the potion effect. And then we'll do one, one. This is the amplifier making it regeneration two. And this one here is the probability of you getting the potion effect from zero to one. And then for proof of concept, we'll do another potion effect. We can add as many as we'd like. We'll do Minecraft strength, for example. And then dot remove effect. This is pretty cool because if you eat this food, you will effectively remove this potion effect upon consuming the item. So dot always edible is also an option, just like the golden apple. And then dot fast to eat. This will set it to be consumed twice as fast, just like dried kelp. And then we'll put dot meat as well is an option so that you can feed this to your dogs if you set this here. And of course, we'll have to give this a texture. So going back into the CubeJS assets folder, we'll put our food texture in the items folder like so. Now startup scripts require a full game restart, unlike server or client scripts where you can use the slash CubeJS reload commands. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now that we are back in game, if we go into our creative menu, we search up tempura, we will see our ancient tempura right here. And if we go into survival and we eat it, we should get regeneration 2 and strength 2 effects. And it is fast to eat. And if we summon a wolf, we should be able to feed it. So now to create our custom inventory. Like before, we can copy and paste this 
from before. It is this startup events.registry block this time. And then we'll do curly bracket parentheses. We'll make it a code block. And then in here, we will do event.create. And we'll call it machine block. And outside of this, we will do dot sound type this time. And we'll make it netherite block. So it'll make the netherite block sound when you place it and break it. So we'll do dot block entity. We are setting it as a block entity and entity info is what we'll call this event right here. Space curly bracket, then we'll do entity info dot inventory. And then we'll do parentheses nine comma four. This will set the size nine by four, which will give it 36 inventory slots. Then we'll do another entity info dot right click opens inventory. And then we put a parentheses after this. This will make it so you can right click it to open its inventory. Then we'll do dot entity info yet again. And we'll do client tick. And in parentheses, we'll do 20 comma zero comma entity equal sign bracket and then of course curly brackets and every 20 ticks it will run this event on the client side and then we'll make it i'm just gonna copy and paste this we'll make it emit particles of camp fire cozy smoke and this is true this is very similar to the in-game particle command we'll do enter again entity info and then we'll do dot server tick this time parentheses we'll run it every 20 ticks with an offset of zero and then we'll do entity we'll specify the entity yet again equal sign bracket curly bracket enter and we'll do entity dot inventory Ooh. inventory then we'll do dot insert item in quote uh in parentheses we'll do minecraft apple and then do comma false and this will every 20 ticks or every one second will insert an apple into this inventory on the server side and now if we go into our assets folder and we go into the blocks i have a machine block texture right here for it and now that we're back in game we will search machine block and we will find our block right here and if we place it down and we right click it we should see that it has an inventory. It is our custom chest and it is inserting every tick or every 20 ticks an apple into this inventory. All right, so this time we will be registering a creative mode tab, our personal tab. So we'll do startup events dot registry. This time we will do creative mode tab and then we'll do event equals bracket, curly bracket, enter. And we'll do event dot create and we will call it the tab uh, dirt. And then we'll set the icon, do two parentheses this time. And then outside of this inner parentheses, we'll do space, equal sign bracket, uh, Minecraft dirt. Then outside of this, we'll do dot content. This will set the contents. So we'll do another double parentheses. And then outside of this inner parentheses, we'll do equal sign bracket, uh, angle brackets this time. And this will be the list of items that we will put inside this creative mode tab. And we'll just add dirt and grass block, right? So if you go into game, we should see this creative mode tab that has our dirt and our grass blocks in it. Before we do that, we will also do startup events and dot modify creative mode tab. And in here we can edit already existing creative mode tabs. So we'll do Minecraft redstone blocks, for example. And outside of the quotation marks, we can put event, and then we'll put our function and do events.add. We can add items such as our custom machine block. And then we can do events.icon equals QGIS machine block as well. And then we'll do event.display name. We can display the name as anything we want. And we'll do text.green, for example, this time. 
and then we'll do in quotation marks machine blocks and we'll save that and if we go into game we should see our edited creative mode tab as well as our custom tab and now if we go back into game and we go into our creative menu we should see the icon being our machine block as well as the name renamed to machine blocks and if we scroll down we can see our machine block added to the creative tab and if we go over to the second page we can see our custom dirt tab which has dirt and grass block in here all right moving on to the server scripts we'll be showing you today we will be looking at two example scripts I've written up for you. All right, so if we go into the edit monster armor.js, I'll be explaining this. This is an entity event of spawned. So when an entity spawns, it will run an if statement. If the event.entity.type.toString equals Minecraft skeleton, meaning if it's a skeleton, it will run events within these perimeters right here. And the events we will be running is event.entity set item slot five being the helmet slot four being the chest plate three being the leggings to the boots all being diamond armor and it will run an else if statement of if it's a zombie this time it will run these events setting the zombie to wear full iron so if we go back into game and i already have this ready if we summon a zombie he will be wearing full iron and if we summon a skeleton, it will wear full diamond. So since this is a 100% chance that they will be equipped in uh, OP armor, we do not want that. We want something a little bit different. And this is something, credit to Donald for helping me out with this in the Discord support section, I'll link in the description if you wanna join that. In this script, it will randomly equip them with this list of armor. And this is very nice because all you have to do to change this is change one of these or add more items like so. And here it is specifying the function right here for you, which it will equip them as well. And I've added another entry here of Minecraft uh, Zombie Villager to show you exactly how to add more mobs. You would just copy and paste this else if statement like so. If we go back in the game and we do slash cube.js reload server scripts, to reload our server script and we spawn in a skeleton we have random armor and they spawn they look kind of goofy so you could also change it you know change the list so that they're more consistent that's all up to you so moving on to the last server script we have here i will be showing you how to add items to players with this new join file so we'll open it up we are specifying here it is a player event in your server scripts of logged in and we're specifying if and then an exclamation mark means if they don't have this if the event.player.stage has new join if they don't have new join they will add the new join in these brackets here and we will run other events as well such as giving them a nether star giving them an emerald and we are equipping them with full leather and then outside of these brackets, we will run an event to give them a diamond every time they join, regardless if they have the new joined stage added. So this will run once and this will run every time. So if we load a new world in, uh, we should see that we are equipped in leather armor, as well as we have an emerald and we have a nether star in our inventory because that is our starting gear. Pretty OP uh, starting gear, but you know, this is proof of concept. You could have this do stuff like add messages, welcome messages, have it link your Discord. There's a lot of stuff that you could do with the script. If you did find this tutorial useful, then go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. It really motivates me to do more tutorials in the future. I plan on doing a series where I showcase really cool scripts like these, where you'll be able to download them and I'll explain them as well. Again, if you're having trouble with a script and need help, I'll leave the link to the Discord where you can open up a ticket in the support section where people will help you figure it out. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.